for the hardest hitting show in talk radio. The true progressive voice since 2012. This is South Pause. And welcome to South Paws on the Pacifica Radio Network. We are the leaders of the revolution. My name is Darren Gibson, and I am your host today. My co-host, Jack Prince, is in Florida right now. He's enjoying some warm weather and sunshine along with some members of his family. I do expect him back joining me next week behind the microphone to discuss all the political news and information that you need and give our opinions on it as well. Before we get started, a couple reminders that you can follow us on social media by going to facebook.com forward slash South Paws Radio Show. You can follow us on Twitter at South Paws Radio. You can become a patron of the show by going to patreon.com forward slash South Paws Radio. We could use all the help that we can get financially. Of course, all of our podcasts are available at Spreaker.com. Do a search for South Paws there. You can find us at the iTunes store. Do a search under podcast for South Paws. And once you've found our logo, you've found us. Our podcasts are made available to our Facebook page, our Twitter account, and our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube.com. Do a search for South Paws Radio there. And, of course, you can find us on great Pacifica stations across the country, including KCEI-FM Taos, New Mexico, KZGM Kabul, Missouri, and at Global Community Radio Channel 1. We're on every Monday night at 9 p.m. right after Democracy Now! Make sure you check us out there as well. Well, we got quite a bit that I want to cover today. I guess the big thing to discuss is the conflict between the U.S. and Iran. Of course, we mentioned it as somewhat of a breaking news on our show last week uh, because the raid that killed Soleimani happened Thursday night, Friday morning, Iran time. And since then, there's been a lot of saber rattling. Iran has uh, launched missiles at a couple of U.S. bases in Iraq There's a little bit more to it than that. It appears like, as I had hoped for, cooler heads are prevailing. At least that's what it looks like on the surface. Who knows what will happen at this point. But here's the thing. Donald Trump on Wednesday came out in a news conference, and he had talked about what happened with Iran launching the missiles and that he said it appears that Iran is standing down. Of course, there's been a lot of reporting by various media agencies. I have this. This is dated January 8th. This is by John Bacon and Tom Vandenbroek writing for USA Today. The U.S. military had advanced warning of Iran's missile assault on two Iraqi bases housing U.S. forces. Attacks that prompted a vow of new economic sanctions Wednesday from Donald Trump. Trump said no deaths or injuries resulted from the attacks. He said Iran appeared to be standing down and announced no military reprisal for the missile attack. He did add that powerful sanctions would be imposed. Iran fired more than a dozen missiles Tuesday in retaliation of a U.S. drone strike days earlier. They killed one of Tehran's most powerful military leaders, Qasem Soleimani. The missiles targeted Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq's western Anbar province and another base in Erbil in Iraq's semi-autonomous Kurdish region. The extent of damage to the bases was not immediately clear, but early warning defense systems gave U.S. forces advanced knowledge that missiles had been launched, that according to a U.S. official speaking to USA Today on the condition of anonymity. Apparently also, uh, I've also heard some sources say that Iran had contacted Iraqi officials to say, we're getting ready to launch these missiles at these two bases. You better get your folks out of there. Continue. The official, who was not authorized to speak publicly, added that a hangar was damaged at Al-Assad, a sprawling complex 100 miles west of Baghdad that houses about 1,500 coalition forces. The warnings allowed U.S. troops and other personnel to scramble into hardened bunkers for safety, 
U.S. and coalition personnel in Iraq on the mission to combat ISIS have been practicing drills for missile attacks for some time, the official said. The official added, quote, the early warning system worked, end of quote. General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, also credited the system for preventing casualties, telling reporters the missiles were sent with the intent of doing serious harm, not merely to create the illusion that Iran was retaliating. Milley adding, quote, I believe based on what I saw and what I know that they were intended to cause structural damage, destroy vehicles and equipment and aircraft, and to kill personnel, end of quote. Well, I don't know. They've, they've, I've heard different stories. I've heard that this was Iran's way of quote-unquote getting revenge. However, I have this story. This is from the New York Times, Megan Specia, writing on Thursday. A day after Donald Trump backed away from further military conflict with Iran, a commander of the country's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps declared that Iran would soon take harsher revenge on the United States for a drone strike last week that killed a top Iranian general. But another Iranian military leader said his country's missile attacks targeting Americans in Iraq this week had not been intended to kill anyone. The remarks were just some of the mixed messages put forth by Iranian leaders on Thursday after Iranian missile strikes, which hit two military bases in Iraq housing American troops. So, again, who knows what's really going on here. Continuing the New York Times story a little bit further down, on Thursday, the commander of the Revolution Guards Air Force, Brigadier General Amir Ali Hazidzeh, described the strikes on the bases in Iraq as just the beginning of a major operation against the United States. That is according to Iran's Tasnim News Agency. But he also noted that the strikes had not aimed to kill anyone. He quickly followed up with the claim that tens of people were killed and wounded, a point disputed by American, Iraqi, and other international accounts. A senior commander in the Revolutionary Guards, Abdullah Aragi, said on Thursday that Iran's armed forces would, quote, impose harsher revenge on the enemy in the near future, end of quote. That, again, is according to Iran's Tasnim News Agency. President Hassan Rouhani of Iran spoke with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson Thursday morning and warned of further action, according to the president's office. According to the statement, Rouhani said, quote, if the U.S. makes another mistake, it will receive a very dangerous response, end of quote. The Deputy General of the Revolutionary Guards, Ali Fadavi, also pledged vengeance, according to a separate report from the English-language version of Tasnim. In a speech in the central province of Isfahan on Thursday, General Fadavi said, quote, This move was one of the manifestations of our capabilities. No country has ever made such a great move against the United States as we did. We dropped dozens of missiles into the heart of the U.S. base in Iraq, and they couldn't do a damn thing. End of quote. The new leader of the Quds Force, Ismail Khani, a longtime deputy of General Suleimani, released a statement Thursday outlining his own commitment to moving forward with his predecessor's agenda in the region. Again, that is according to the Iranian news site Tasnim. General Khani added that the ultimate goal was to drive American forces out of the region. So, and it just continues on and on from there. Well, Donald Trump kind of had his own take on things, and I've got some quotes here along with some analysis. The analysis is going to come from the Washington Post. This is an article written by Glenn Kessler and Salvador Rizzo. This is dated January 8th. Donald Trump's address to the nation after Iran's missile strikes on bases in Iraq where U.S. troops are stationed contained a number of factually dubious statements. And here they are. I'm going to play them in order. Let's play cut one first. This one runs about 18 seconds. So take a listen, folks. Iran's hostility substantially increased after the foolish Iran nuclear deal was signed in 2013. And they were given $150 billion, not to mention $1.8 billion in cash. According to the analysis from the Washington Post, says the final deal was signed in 2015, but that's not the least of Trump's factual problems in this sentence. 
It includes two misleading statements, including one bottomless Pinocchio claim. Trump often makes it sound as if the United States cut a check to Iran as part of the Iran nuclear deal, formerly known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. He also always uses too high an estimate, $150 billion for the assets involved. But this was always Iran's money. Iran had billions of dollars frozen in foreign banks because of international sanctions over its nuclear program. The Treasury Department estimated that once Iran fulfilled other obligations, it would have about $55 billion left. The Central Bank of Iran said the number was $32 billion. As for the $1.8 billion, which was actually $1.7 billion, this was related to the settlement of a decades-old claim between the two countries, not the Iran nuclear agreement. An initial payment of $400 million was handed over on January 17, 2016, the day after Iran released four American detainees, including Washington Post correspondent Jasa Razanin. The timing, which U.S. officials insisted was a coincidence, suggested the cash could be viewed as a ransom payment. But the initial cash payment was always Iran's money. In the 1970s, the then pro-Western Iranian government under the Shah paid $400 million for U.S. military equipment. The equipment was never delivered because the two countries broke off relations after the seizure of American hostages at the U.S. Embassy in Iran. Two other payments totaling $1.3 billion, a negotiated agreement on the interest owed on the $400 million, came weeks later. So again, this was Iran's own money. It had nothing to do with paying anybody off. It had nothing to do with any of that. So, gee, Trump opens his mouth and a lie tumbles out of it. Well, let's go to cut number two. This one runs 11 seconds. Take a listen to this, folks. Instead of saying thank you to the United States, they chanted death to America. In fact, they chanted death to America the day the agreement was signed. As the Washington Post analysis continues, this is a straw man. A relatively small percentage of Iranians participate in these chants, which is mainly of symbolic use for the government. Former Washington Post writer Robin Wright wrote in The New Yorker in 2015, quote, Over the decades, I've heard death to America shouted routinely at Friday prayers and at commemorations of the U.S. Embassy takeover and other demonstrations. The regime refuses to shelve the slogan. These days, however, students are often bussed in on anniversaries as crowd filler. The perk is a day off from school. They chant when prompted. The enthusiasm is a bit like the anti-American graffiti on public walls. It hasn't been painted over, but it's fading. End of quote. So there's that. So it's basically just propaganda from the point of Iran. And of course, that might be part of the reason why Iranians have been revolting, not just the high gasoline prices over there. I've got cut number three. This runs about 23 seconds. Then Iran went on a terrorist spree, funded by the money from the deal, and created hell in Yemen, Syria, Lebanon, Afghanistan, and Iraq. The missiles fired last night at us and our allies were paid for with the funds made available by the last administration. Oh, so it was the Obama administration that caused this. Yeah, once again, Trump has to blame the black guy for something. Here's how the Washington Post analyzed it. All money is fungible, but Trump is stretching the factual evidence to blame the missiles on the deal negotiated by the Obama administration. Experts say such a claim is far-fetched and that intelligence tying Iran deal money directly to the missiles is highly unlikely. The White House did not respond to a request for evidence. Karim Sajapur, an Iran policy analyst at the Carnegie Endowment for the International Peace, said, quote, There's no way to corroborate that. It's such an obviously unprovable claim. I'm surprised it wasn't excised. End of quote. When the nuclear deal was negotiated, many experts warned that lifting sanctions on Iran would free up more money for militant groups funded by Iran. 
Obama administration officials said they expected Iran's activities in the region would increase and they were prepared to take action through sanctions and other